Are you concerned at all that your party is going too far to the left to either win in the midterms or win back the White House? You can't win the White House without the Midwest. Everyone has an opinion about what Midwestern voters want. But which Midwesterners are they talking about? Appeal to these upper Midwest uh, working class voters. The one group the Democrats most need. Midwestern voters. White Midwest working class voters who deserted the party in 2016. You need to be able to talk to the industrial Midwest. You need to listen to the people there um, and in order to win an election nationwide. And that's exactly what I did. I went across Milwaukee to ask black residents who make up nearly 40% of the city's population if they thought policies like Medicare for all or free college tuition were too far left. Can't say I had much luck. My first stop was Milwaukee City Hall to talk to Alderman Khalif Rainey. What did he think about these policies being too far left? That's absurd. You know, it's a preconceived notion that has been uh, developed from quite a distance. Those are simple human needs and human rights, right? Who doesn't want a, a family supporting livable wage earning job? Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want access to health care? Uh, I think that's very presumptuous and, and that's polite. You know, that's polite. You know, it's actually bizarre and it even brings into question, um, are, they, are they actually Democrats? Free stuff from the government does not play well in the Midwest. Medicare for all. Do you think that's a political suicide? The party's suicide? not there. The party's not there at all. So, some of again. your opponents are. Yeah, but the party's not there. Can you win the Electoral College with Medicare for all? Well, it would increase the vote in my own district, but that's not... <laughs> That's not um, what we need to do in order to win the Electoral College. This is all sounding very coastal. This is all sounding very liberal. It might work on the coast, but here in the middle of the country, where the, where the election is probably going to be decided in 2020, these, these positions still seem a little out there. I spoke to two retired union workers of A.O. Smith, which used to have a factory next to Alderman Rainey's district. Did they think progressive politics could work in the Midwest? When you talk about it not being for the Midwest, Milwaukee mm -hmm. and the state of Wisconsin was, was at one time the most progressive state in the nation. Milwaukee yeah, well, is the, the well, most recent Democratic Socialist mayor presided in this city. Island. What's happening in New York and other places around the country with these Democratic Socialists that's winning mm -hmm. uh, office, we can do the same thing okay, in Okay, so the Midwest... So the Midwest and the way the Midwest is looked at from the broader communities, from the East Coast, from the West Coast, is that people who live in the, in the Midwest are basically corn farmers, okay? That's the way we are looked at. And it's as, it's as if we don't have ideas and thought processes ourselves. The Midwest, like the working class, has become synonymous with white. But assuming the region mostly has conservatives who need to be won over has serious political implications. A community on edge. Overnight, a crackdown to stop the raging protests against police. The neighborhood that was set on fire closing from dusk till dawn under a strictly enforced curfew. This will happen because they're not helping the black community. Like, you know, the rich people, they got all this money. And they... This entire community has sat back and witnessed how Milwaukee, Wisconsin has become the worst place to live for African Americans in the entire country. Now this is the warning cry. Where do we go from here? Where do we go as a community from here? Do we continue to continue with the inequities, the injustice, the unemployment, the undereducation that creates these byproducts that we see this evening? Do we continue that? Why didn't you vote in 2016? Um, because the uh, candidates that were running, they weren't uh, in tune with the poor people, the people in the poor communities. And they weren't too much of paying attention to the problems that we were having or how the laws were affecting us. What were some of the issues that you're saying poor people in Milwaukee were dealing with? Cost of living first, it actually went up. The wages, the working wages here, the pay is, nothing and the living is the cost of living is going up so i mean like we should have a increase in pay this was again a a middle class mm -hmm. solid middle class yeah. neighborhood yeah. there were businesses now, all up and down when 
when it did become predominantly a black neighborhood, this company was still thriving. And these community, this community was still thriving. Right. The houses were, the lawns were immaculate, houses well taken care of. Owner occupied. When some of the older generation that worked here passed on, they passed these houses over to their children, and many of them were lost because the children could not afford to keep the taxes up because they didn't have job, self-sustaining jobs that would allow them. Manufacturing jobs abandoned Milwaukee's city center for over 40 years, leaving behind a 45% black male employment rate, the lowest of any major city in the country. But the narrative is that moderate voters would feel abandoned with basic social programs. How do other Democrats feel? Free health care, does that make you feel abandoned? Not at all. Not you at all. don't feel like you just long for high medical bills? No, nope, not at all. Okay. I mean, I'll feel abandoned if we don't talk about these things. A job guarantee, does that make you feel abandoned? Mm -hmm. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Those are things we need. Free higher education. Come yeah, on. I got student loans. <laughs> yes, I don't want anyone to have to go through the student loan payments that I do. You okay. know, I have friends and family. I'm almost 30 and I'm not thinking about, you know, raising kids or buying a house because I know I am in debt because of student loans. And so to be clear, we're in Milwaukee. We're not in the Bronx. Milwaukee and you as in a resident, a native of Milwaukee, you're okay with those types of loans. Most definitely. So none of these Midwesterners thought progressive policies were too far left. And it's not just them. All over the country, everyday people are electing progressives of all races and backgrounds. So maybe the real problem isn't with the left. It seems that Democratic Party leaders have just left out their base. Politically, Democrat, Republican, conservative, it's like voting for Lucifer, Satan, and the devil. You're going to catch hell with all three. <laughs> There's this assumption, for whatever reason, that the Midwest will be turned off if the Democratic Party adopts these policies. Is this real? That is so real. Like, how is that based off of geography? They think it's too far left for the Midwest. And so I'm making fun Who of made this up, though? Who came up Chris with this? Cone. There's like a whole contingency of, uh, they call themselves the new democracy. These are Democratic senators, including... I don't know if Tammy Duckworth is in that group, but Chris Coons is in that group. And he was like, we cannot like abandon um, our moderate voters, like voters in the Midwest. This is not the type of policy that they would want. Like this isn't the Bronx. You know? This is crazy. <laughs> I'm in politics. I've never heard no such thing. Wow. That's